How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Tokyo Rising. It is now 60 episodes not out for this series. Thank you for the ongoing support. And today, we start season number eight. Eight seasons is a pretty significant football manager save at any time. I feel like here, to get eight seasons done in Japan like we have, has been pretty remarkable. Last year, we won the title, but domestic success outside of league titles has escaped us so far. That could change very early on this year, today, as we're playing in the Fujifilm Super. Super Cup to kick off the season, and we go into it against Belmare, who I think are significantly worse than us. Their media prediction is 17th. We should be beating them, I think. Now, of course, last episode was a transfer special. Hopefully you caught it. If you didn't, go watch it. It was a slightly longer episode as well. We got a whole lot of business done, um, as you can see here. No new signings off the back of last episode, but just a minor heads up. If you're looking at my last two friendlies, thinking, Jack, the results there are different to the results when you played last episode. Yep. I did the amateur YouTube thing where you record a football manager session, you get to the end of it, and then you just close the game without saving. Now, the good news was that I closed the game without saving, and the auto-save was actually after I'd done all the transfers anyway. But just full disclosure, that's why those results are different. And let's all we'll note this is that and think there's funny business going on. No. I can assure you it's just my own incompetency. Anyway, today we are going to do a run-through of the squad. We're going to play the first game of the season in the Super Cup, and then we're also going to take on V Varen. I had the option of doing the Nagasaki City Stadium as an episode live com kind of away day, or we could go to the Japan National Stadium. I bet you can't guess which I'd rather do. Let's run the intro and get into things. Like I've already said, welcome back. Season 8, it's Tuesday. Let's kick off today with a little bit of a squad rundown because the team, let's be honest, it's seen a little bit of change over the summer. Not overhauls necessarily, but I feel like it's worth just reorientating ourselves with where we're at. So this year, when it comes to our goalkeeping options, Nakano is still the main man between the sticks. However, his understudy is someone new in Suzuki. The 18-year-old was signed for a grand total of 300k. That's not really a cheap transfer but he's a very, very good backup Japanese goalkeeper who has the potential to get homegrown at club due to the fact he's only 18 years old. That was definitely a big reason to sell him. It does mean that our second choice goalkeeper of last year, Junpei Noda, is now our third choice, which probably is for the best. Just as a reminder, he is also already homegrown at club, hence the reason we're keeping him around. That is going to be significant in about six or seven months' time when the Asian Champions League comes around I do actually need homegrown at club players. When it comes to the defence this year, arguably the weak link in the team, at least if you trust star ratings, is going to be our right back in Tachi Banner. But the 21 year old had a very solid first season at J1 level. It was always going to be tough for him to match the 20 assists from the year before. Currently in the process of sorting out a new contract with him that will kick in at the end of the current season. So it won't actually start until January 2032. There's a few players like that you can see unhappy wanting a new deal. The wage rise he wants isn't too significant. And whilst I am going to lose out on the fact that his current deal runs for another six years, I feel like his overall happiness is probably more important. In terms of the alternatives at right back, there's kind of two obvious candidates for the position. There is the old guard in Masaki Mitsuhashi, who I feel like showed that he could do a job at J1 for us this year. And then the other option we have is Murata, who is arguably a better right back option than Mitsuhashi. Certainly has a bit more potential and is actually listed as our hot prospect. To be honest, right back is definitely an area where depth could be better. Besides these two guys, there is one other right back option in Sakaki. Last year, this guy was our backup defensive midfielder. He may feature a little less this year just because of some new additions we've made. But if needed, I think he can be a pretty adequate right back. Over on the left hand side, of course, Dalla Corte will be the main man in that area when he's fit, which he's not at the moment. He is injured to start the year, which is certainly less than ideal. But it opens up an opportunity for our backup left back in Koke Hirao to come in and show us what he's all about. The 18 year old has some crazy physicals. I'll be honest, when it comes to technicals and mentals, he's lacking a hell of a lot. But when we called upon him last year after he joined us in the summer, he chipped in with some pretty good performances. He is going to be our starting option at left back this year. In terms of behind those two players, it is just Mitsuhashi and Murata. Obviously, I've just talked about these two guys. The added benefit of our two backup right backs is they can also play at left back. I feel like versatility in the backup wing back area. It's just always very nice. 
Now, when it comes to centre-backs, a couple of the players I've already talked about can play at centre-back. There's three names in contention, I feel like, to be starting centre-backs, at least to start the year. The first of which is Luck Manga, who, compared to the other options, is definitely significantly better in the air, which is always useful, I feel like, to have one exceptional aerial threat. Manga is that man. The two players who, well, you could argue are better than him overall, but lack their aerial ability, are Ibrahim Ajouf, who, of course, at 19 years old, came into the team last year and really re impressed, and then club at record transfer, Rio Cadono, the 18-year-old, joined us from relegated Sanga during the off-season. We absolutely smashed our record transfer fee to bring him in. I really like the look of this guy. He does lack when it comes to his jumping reach. I am training him to play at defensive midfielder. Longer term, that might well end up being where he plays. Across the entire of our back four, there's lots of versatilities where players can fill in various positions. But of the other centre-backs in the team, our fourth choice is Sakaguchi. The 20-year-old is a very, very good player. If we just look at his information here, very, very close to getting homegrown at club status. Again, that is going to be valuable longer term. So I expect to keep him around in the team. Last year, we called upon him way more often than I expected we would. Hopefully, he's not playing quite as many games this season. Of course, this year, we are sticking with our asymmetric 4-2-4 that's worked really, really well for us this year. The man who slotted in on the regular at defensive mid was Nakamura. Has declined a little bit during the offseason, which is a tad disappointing, but the 21-year-old is still a very, very good player. We signed him for 200 and 10k came straight up into j1 and really made his mark on the team last year he is the player who potentially will be at risk eventually um once we see Cadono learn that defensive midfielder position but you know what for now the man in green can do a job and behind him in terms of depth is probably on sakaki the man who i've mentioned could play right back in an emergency to be that backup player then again the 20 year old is our vice captain and is a very good player in his own right one position in the team that we lacked depth in going into this year was the roaming playmaker position or rather we end of the year without that depth. Of course, Yamazaki was the go-to player in this area of the pitch throughout the year just gone. A guy that we signed last year but loaned back to his club, and in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done it, was Kataoka here. The 20-year-old, I think, could be the future in this roaming playmaker position. I feel like you could argue already he is better than Yamazaki. He is a year older, to be fair, but he's going to offer some really good competition in this area. The man who was back up last year is one of our few foreign players in the team in Lucas Ferreira. The reality is, when you compare him against the players that we now have in this area who are Japanese, he really can't compete. There's part of me that feels like maybe I should be selling Ferreira if the right offer comes in. And if you are sat thinking, I don't recognize Tomoyuki here, he was one of the few players that I needed to give a face to start this year. This is his face. Look how happy he looks to be here. Now, when it comes to the wide attacking midfielder area, this is perhaps one of the areas in the team which could be better, but the players I've got here have played so well, I don't really want to replace them. On the right-hand side, our go-to winger is Kamiyama. Truthfully, most of the players that play in the wide area for us across the team are more inside forward-like players. This guy is very much your typical winger. He's also our star set-piece taker on his right foot. And by star taker, I mean he's got 11 corners. Uh, look, last year he got 7 goals and 13 assists. 20 goal contributions was massive. More of the same from him would be nice. Over on the other left-hand side, as I already mentioned, more inside forward kind of players. Haruto Honda holds down the spot. A little bit concerned he's unhappy at the moment. He was unhappy at the start of last year and eventually he was happy again. Last time he was unhappy, he started clubbing. The good news is he's not hit the town yet. I think the backup out on the right-hand side for this year is just going to be Hashizume. Again, the 21-year-old, capable of doing a job there. When I look at his polygon now, it's not nearly as impressive as it felt when I signed him once upon a time. But I feel like with his pace, he can be a good option on off the bench with some really nice technical should opportunities fall his way. And out on the left-hand side, the first choice backup is going to be Sasaki. The 21-year-old had so many issues with injuries throughout last year. He's had more issues with injuries lately. He's still not listed as injury prone, so I'm not sure if I've just got monumentally unlucky. But yeah, he has now had five moderate injuries in the last year. That's a little bit concerning, especially because my next left-back option behind Sasaki is going to be Sakurai, who's currently playing with the B team, and that is for a reason. The 24-year-old joined us back when we were in J3, did make a handful of appearances last year. If he's playing in the team, we've got issues, and I'm already looking to address this, not by signing anyone, but actually, Kibay here, who we signed last year, I am now beginning to train to play as an inside forward out on the left-hand side. I feel like he could be a really good inside forward option. Just going to take him a little bit to learn it. Hopefully, throughout this year, he will get some opportunities to play there.
And of course, when it comes to the strikers in this team, these are the two men starting for us. Nemo last year ended the year with 20 goals in the league. He got eight of those in the last four games. It was a ridiculous run to end the year, which featured two hat-tricks. Would love him to start the year in the same vein of form. Tabba, by comparison, perhaps slightly worse, actually, overall on balance. His contract is up in two years' time. Right now, he doesn't want to discuss a new contract. I'm desperate to sign him on to a new contract. The 20-year-old was our top goal scorer in the league last year. They are going to be our first choice options as the pressing forward and advance forward. It's worth noting that some of those players who I've mentioned are backup in the wide areas also end up being the backups in the striking department. There's one more name that I really should mention here who will feature at striker, I'm sure, at some point this year. Masato Takagi, a man who's been here since we were in the fourth tier of Japanese football. Once upon a time, he was the main man. Slowly, he has been phased out of the team. Truthfully, last year, didn't exactly do an amazing job at J1 level, but in an emergency, we should be able to call upon him. Anyway, that is a little bit of a squad rundown. Our team is 26 players strong. I feel like it's always nice just at the start of the year to give you a little bit of a run through the team, remind you who's who, players that might come in at various points during the year. To start this year, there is a little bit of a makeshift look about it just because of a few injuries. Well, I say a few. There's one injury which makes it makeshift. Delacorte, this guy will be missed. He is one of our top earners at the moment. And if I was going to tell you, keep an eye on this player this year, it has to be Rio Cardono. We've signed him as our key man. He is the top earner at the club. He's our most expensive transfer in history. And at 18 years old, going to be a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Speaking of which, he is going to be making his debut in our first game, which is the Fujifilm Super Cup. But before all of that, an away day to the Japan National Stadium. Built in 2019, it should be nice. There should be footage. Let's go see what it's all about. I'll tell you what, in terms of away days, we've not got far to go today. You could probably walk to the game. This is where we play in Japan. This is where we're going to play today, at the Japan National Stadium, right in the middle of uh, Tokyo, and look at it. Look at it. I mean, I say look at it. Uh, there's not a lot to see here. If we go to the satellite view, look at it. It's a real proper actual football stadium. Um, I'm looking for parking, and I'm beginning to think there's probably not a lot of parking here because... Well, we're in the center of Tokyo. You can just use the trains. I have to say, around the edge here, we've got what I think is baseball. For a moment, I thought it was like a driving range or top golf or something. But I think it is. I think it's baseball. I'm getting thrown off by stuff like this. Maybe sometimes of the year it's baseball and other times of the year it's a driving range. Either way, that's next door to the stadium. There's another major stadium next door, another baseball ground. More baseball here as well. And over on this side, we've got the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium for major sport events. It all sounds very serious, doesn't it? Right, there's not a load of roads next door. Given the fact this is the National Stadium, I was about to say, I'm hoping there's lots of footage. Good news, everyone. There is lots of footage. Ah, okay, this is awkward. I've gone on Street View, where the stadium is. This stadium was built in 2019. This footage is from 2011. Uh, <laughs> the stadium's not here. When I clicked the green man and saw all these random lines, I did wonder, is, are these actually of the stadium or are they of something else? Let's go and see what this... I mean, this isn't here anymore, is it? This is the old stadium. I mean, the, I, I feel like... Mm, I feel like I shouldn't be here. Time travel is a new thing. If I click on the dots on the actual running track, are they better? Oh, here we go. The Tokyo Olympics, of course. A bit empty, not many fans in attendance. But look at this stadium. It, it does look very, very nice, doesn't it? It's a slight upgrade on what was here before. Does any of the footage outside have the new stadium? This is from 2023. We're like kind of too close to the stadium to get a good look. But from the outside, it just looks cool, doesn't it? I'm trying to get like a wider angle to look at the stadium from the outside. This is it. I mean, this looks wicked. It doesn't look like any other stadium I've seen. In a weird way, it kind of reminds me of that one stand that there was, I think, at Frontale when we played against them. They had that one modern ground that looked like a ship from the outside. The architecture on this is very cool. Also, is that underground car parking? Uh, maybe. Actually, I think it's a train station. I mean, don't drive a car down there. Yeah, this is what the old stadium looked like from the outside. Uh, I can see why they knocked it down and built a new one. I'm going to say it. It's a minor glow up, isn't it? What I will say to its criticism, it does look the same on all sides of the ground, which I normally complain about. But I mean, when a stadium looks this cool and this green, kind of with the wooden panels and stuff, can you even be mad? Right, if I go to these dots in the stadium, is it going to be of the current pitch or the old? 
it's the old stadium. This is what the old stadium looked like as a reference. This is actually a really good high quality photo from 2014. I mean, all I'm going to say is these seats don't look comfy. Seats without a back on them should be illegal. That, that's what I'm going to campaign for when I run for Prime Minister. I mean, in some ways, this old stadium looked quite cute, but mm, yeah, it can't compete with the new one. Not only do the seats have backs on them, they've put holes in the bottom of the new seat so it drains water when it rains. Oh my word, they thought of everything. Here is, by the way, the new stadium. I mean, I criticise Japan a lot, actually, for the lack of seat art, the lack of team names written in the seats. I love this mismatch of kind of colours to create just a really awesome pattern. But does it have the same character as this? You know what? I'm going to give the old ground a rating and the new ground a rating. The old ground... I'm going to give a respectable 6 out of 10. Look, it's not an offensive ground. It's a cool stadium, lack of roofs, bad seats with no backs on or it's downfall. And then, I mean, as for the new stadium, I mean, let's just agree. The, the design of it looks really cool with kind of the multi-tiered layout. The stuff going on around the edge as well. I think this is mini golf or top golf some time of the year and the rest of the year it's baseball. Either that... Or they've just randomly added holes, which I, like, I've never played baseball. Maybe they have holes for you to hit the ball in. I wouldn't know. The new stadium needs a score. This might be controversial. I really, really like the design of it a lot. I love the greenery. Um, I want to say seven, but part of me wants to say eight. You know what? Seven and a half out of ten. There's the score for the Japan National Stadium. It just looks cool, doesn't it? And also, if you know what's going on here, is it baseball? Is it golf? Answers on a postcard. Comment down below. Anyway, saying all of that, we're going to get into this first game of the year. It's the Japan Super Cup. We are technically the away team, but I feel like we probably go into this game as slight favourites. Balmare were not good last year. Of course, when it comes to our team for this year, no changes in the starting eleven that have been well made through choice. Hiral, the 18-year-old, is going to be made making that appearance at left back. He is perhaps the one weak link in the team I'm a little bit worried about. I'm saying all of this hoping that football manager's going to football manager. Suddenly he's going to get like a hat trick of assists or something. That would be nice. What I will say is uh, the game is not particularly well attended, is it? Look how many empty seats there are here for the Super Cup. This is meant to be super. By the way, we've got new kits this year. Are they going to bring us good luck immediately? Tabba, Yamazaki, this build-up plays nice. Kamiyama, shot deflected, falls to Honda. There's a goal inside three minutes. And of course, the man who scored the goal as the camera inexplicably reverses. It, the man who scored it is, of course, the player who's currently asking for a new contract. Honda's definitely going to hold this against me if he gets a load of goals to start the year. He's going to start asking for more money. Oh, okay. They've got a corner. It's whipped towards the near post. It's headed away nicely. Still, though, Anzai to keep it alive. Oki, Sawada for them. On the far side. And Nielsen drills it across. I feel like that should have been offside. And in fact, it would have been offside. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, Jack, why are you not giving Honda a new contract if he needs a new contract? And then there's a few other players you are. It literally boils down to demands. There's a few players in the team like uh, Tachi Banner at right back who have asked for new contracts and just want £2,000. Honda wants £8,000. Our current highest earner is on 3500 I can't justify to give him it, especially because he's got a few years left on his current deal. Anyway, saying all of that, he's probably going to try and make me justify it by scoring goals in this one. He started this game well, and while speaking of the devil, Hiral to Honda, back to Hiral, the left back, bringing it forward, cutting inside. I'm a genius, that's why I've played him. Football manager heard me. The game listened, knew I said his name, now he pops up and scores. I did say, didn't I, a hat-trick of assists. What about a hat-trick of goals? I love the little give-and-go here with Honda, by the way, using that pace to get him behind, and then cutting inside onto his right foot. That was a delightful goal. Throwing on the far side, Hiral to Tabba, looking to maybe get it goalwards. Yamazaki, he does get it goalwards. Hiral keeps it alive, squares it. It was offside. It wouldn't have counted. It would have been a really nice goal had it resulted in one, though. I mean, so far in this game, they are yet to have a shot on goal at all. We've had six shots total. It's not like we've been completely dominant in this game, but the scoreline definitely reflects the fact that we've been the better team. We've been creating more, and we're looking to continue to do that here. Nemo, wide to Tachi Banner, the right back, the number two to the byline, pulls it across. It goes all the way across the goal to Tabba. That, that his first goal of the season. I went into this game expecting us to get a result. Balmare are not a good team. They are a team predicted to finish just above the drop. Last year, they avoided relegation by just a single point. They had a miracle run to win the Empress Cup. I don't think there's going to be a miracle here. Nemo, free kick, pulls the trigger. Not far over. Our players are not relenting. I'm actually now looking at this game at three goals up, thinking there's a few players who I want to bring into the team and want to learn new positions. Maybe this is just a good excuse to bring 
bring them in. I mentioned Kibe. I'm wanting to train him to play as an inside forward. We're training him to play there. He's not yet done a training session in that new position. He's going to learn by trial by fire. We're going to put him on the left-hand side. Similarly, I'm going to take off Nakamura. I'm going to move Kadono to defensive midfielder because I'm training him to play that area. Minutes for players in positions they're learning helps them pick it up. So we'll bring in Juf at centre-back. And you know what? Yamazaki's had a really good game, but I want to see what Kataoka can do for us. The 20-year-old on paper looks like he should be an upgrade on Yamazaki. Kind of kept faith with Yamazaki to start the year just by virtue of the fact he did it really well for us last year. But if Kataoka can put in some good performances, he could find himself wrestling first-team opportunities away from Yamazaki. Okay, honestly, it's been a slower second half. That was somewhat expected with the changes we made, but maybe a chance here as Herald fizzes one in. It's cleared away once and twice. Thought for a moment we might get done on the counter-attack, but Cadono, the record transfer, now playing at defensive mid, has won the play nicely. Tab has picked up a knock. I probably should sub him off, and I probably will sub him off once this highlight wraps up. We're knocking the ball around at the back. Manga to Juff. There's always a free player to find a pass to. Katanooka with the ball for us now. Taking it to the byline. The new player to Kamiyama. Options in the middle. Tabber is there. Tabber has scored. It's his second goal of the year. He's on for a hat-trick, but you know what? He's injured. I don't want to risk him. I'm bringing in Hashizume up top. I mean, at 4-0, I think it's safe to say we are picking up this season where we ended the last one. We are all over them right now. Kibe, options in the middle. Honda... I mean, he thinks he's playing rugby there. He thinks he's getting three points for a conversion. That finish is awful. Before we got that fourth goal of the game in the first of the second half, they were actually showing a little bit of hope with Belmare. Sadly, that's been ripped away from them. With 10 minutes left, I'm now anxiously hoping we can hold on for a clean sheet. It was a big element of our game last year was our ability to keep things firm at the back. More of that this year would be delightful, although well, we might be tested a little bit here as Nakamachi plays it inside Ezekiel Mackey shoots it. It was deflated by Jew Fouad. That would have been probably the best goal of the game had it gone in. It's one of their first chances they've had. It made me a little nervous. I'll level with you. They were a little bit scary there, Belmare. They still have a corner and <laughs> it's not scary. Kataoka has now brought it and for a moment I thought they were going to get a red card. Instead, this is just a pointless highlight, isn't it? Yeah. I've played enough football manager. Three minutes of added time at the end of this game. We've had 17 shots, an XG of 3.43. We've been dominant in this game. It's going to be a clean sheet to start things, and it's a bit more silverware for the collection. In the state of kind of Super Cup history, this is perhaps one of the least Super Super Cups in terms of the teams competing. Certainly, Belmare aren't up there. We, of course, have proven ourselves to be a very good team, but I think there's no denying there's still a little bit of an upstarter kind of nature about us. I still feel like we come into things as underdogs at times. Our media prediction, just as a reminder, is 10th for the coming year. The trophy is going to be, well, questionably hoisted aloft. The confetti rains down. Lads, I'm very, very happy with that. It's not the most important trophy in the world, but it's always nice to win stuff, isn't it? You can see while we were playing in the cup, the J1 season has begun and our J1 season starts very, very shortly. We are going to be taking on Vivaran in just four days time. Need to rest up our players for this one. You can see here their media prediction is 15th. Our media prediction is 9th. So I feel like we do go into this game perhaps as small favourites. Tabba, not going to be available for the game. Two goals he got in the last game. Should have taken him off sooner. Kamiyama at right mid, by the way, got man of the match in that game. I feel like I didn't sing enough of his praises. His performances just sometimes go under the radar. Anyway, the J1 season starts in four days' time. I'm going to rest up the players. I'm going to work out how we're going to deal with the absence of Tabba. Don't go anywhere. Back in a mo. Okay, first game of the J-League season. I'd be lying if I was to say there's not part of me that just wants to rush through the J-League season and get into Champions League kind of time towards the end of things. But we have to take things as they come and getting a win in this first game, I feel like it's semi-important. Of course, we aren't going to be without Tabba, the striker. We knew he was injured, but in midweek, another injury has struck. Juff, the centre-back, out for up to three weeks. Not exactly ideal. Bizarrely, he's got the flu. It's a three-week injury of the flu, which sounds absurd, but I kind of felt like if I kept him at the club and he got other players ill, I'd probably regret it forever. So you know what? I've sent him home. Of course, he wasn't going to be in the starting eleven anyway. Hirao is going to hold down his spot at left back as Dalacorte, as you can see here, still slowly but surely coming back to full fitness. In terms of the rest of the team, it is unchanged with the exception of, of course, Hirao and Kibe, who is going to come in and try and fill the boots 
of Tabber. In terms of raw goal scoring, perhaps not quite to the same level, but a player in his own right who's very technical, very quick, good defensively, hoping that might help him out as the pressing forward. Hopefully he can get off to a good start today. Now, V Varon, we have already faced in a few different episodes, if I'm not mistaken. They're a familiar foe at this point. We should be taking the game to them. I'm going to hope that we can take the game to them. Of course, only a few days rest following on from that Super Cup win, which was rather emphatic. Hope we can get a bit more of the same in this one. V Varon only drew their opening game of the year, so I've got to feel like they're here for the taking. They are going to be playing a 4 3 3. Going to be interesting to see how we match up against it. I'd like to think we can find the gaps, and well, early on, Half an opportunity, perhaps. The ball was played across goal. It's still not away from danger, really. Honda, Hirao, looping. Kamiyama's there. And Hirao's the best left back in the world. I mean, let's be honest. The 18-year-old doesn't have much in the way of technicals, but he can run quick. And it turns out he can put balls into the box like this. A looping cross. And the man on the other end of it, the right winger, who himself has no ability, Kamiyama, scores his first goal of the season. Um, I don't know what to make of that. Just to point out, uh, Kamiyama, six jumping reach, four heading. Yeah, not going to complain. Okay, 20 minutes played, a goal to the good. Hopefully that's going to help our players relax and hopefully while well, the goals are going to continue to flow much like they did at the end of the last season and the start of this one. Kibe in a deep area. Yamazaki holding up the play nicely. Back to Luke Manga now. The centre-back to Yamazaki. Back to Kadono. Look at this. The build-up play is lovely. This is scintillating the ball. Nemo drifting wide. Options in the middle to aim for. He goes back to Tachi Banner at right back. Yamazaki. Nemo. I mean, what a goal it is. The flag's raised. It's not going to count, but... Can we discuss the actual passing there? That was beautiful. It's a goal of the season contender. Minus the fact... Nemo went just half a second too early. I've got to remind myself, despite the great start we've had, it is still only a one-goal game, and, well, we can't afford to concede yet. In fact, you can never really afford to concede. You never want to concede. But a second goal would certainly help, well, alleviate some of the pressure that I'm feeling right now because we've been on top in this game, and when you're on top, you need to get the goals. Honda to Kibe. Kiba is quick. To the byline, options in the middle, holds it up, skips past his man, sits him on his bum, whips it in, and I thought Kamiyama was about to score another header. Sadly, he couldn't get it on that time of asking, but we still have possession here, and it's Kamiyama now with it, whipping in, Honda, bad post! Volleys it over again. They've not yet had a shot in this game. They've had 62% of the ball, though, to be fair to them. And it's not like we're creating a lot against v here. here. Just three shots, one on target, 39% of the ball... I mean, this feels like the kind of game that might just end 1-0. It's 1-0 at the break. We've been the better team. We've had opportunities, sadly. We've not taken enough of them. And I'm going to get shouty-shouty over it. Horikawa on the far side with the ball. Options in the middle. Yada dispossessed, though. And now Nemo finding Kibe, finding Honda. Can he turn on the afterburners and try and get to the byline and drill in a cross? Instead, goes back to Nakamura. Yamazaki, the build-up player here, is lovely and... Well, I thought there was going to be a finish at the end of it. Sadly, the keeper's denied us. I mean, we do still have the corner. Kamiyama, I mentioned his 11 corner taking earlier. <laughs> and it's all on display there. Uh, the ball is dealt with. I mean, we do still technically have it. Manga, Honda, Hirao, Kibe. Forces another save out the keeper. We're doing okay in this game. We just need another goal. Right, let's try this again. Kamiyama, 11 corner taking. Look at him. To Manga. Can't keep his header down. Chance is gone. 10 minutes played of this second half. The longer that we go without scoring another, the more I'm scared that with the possession they're having, eventually they get that one chance to break us down. Oh my word, that was close for comfort. The shot has actually gone out for a throw in there without being deflected. But just a little reminder, we need to be at our best. And in fact, you know what? I've seen enough in this game. Tomoyuki, on you come at roaming playmaker. I'm going to bring in Sasaki in for Kibe, who's not been particularly great in this game. Sasaki, of course, coming back from injury. You can see here, fitness test not required, but opted not to start him in this one. Elsewhere, I mean, the team's playing quite well, aren't they? You know what? Mitsuhashi on for Tachi Banner. The right back's looking a little worse for wear. We'll hold on to two subs in our back pocket. I'm hoping they won't be necessary to get anything here. I'm hoping there's another goal coming. I will point out, they've still not had a shot on target. And as for ourselves, well, we're, we're totting up our total shots on target, but we need the goals. Hirao, Mitsuhashi, the right back on off the bench. Look at that. What a world-class pass by our boy, Kadono with it. Trying to maybe bait out V-Varon here. Just invite them to press a little 
open up some space in behind to operate in. Sometimes if you let a team sit deep, they're harder to break down, and now that space exists for us to try and exploit. Nakamura wide, trying to pick out Mitsuhashi, can't get his man, but Kadono sweeps up the play nicely, and now Katooka on off the bench... Runs straight into trouble, gives away the ball, but I'll tell you what, Vivaran don't want to have the ball at the moment. They give it back to us once more. Kamiyama, Sasaki, ripples the roof of the net, but the shot's off target. Hirao with the ball. I feel like he's been involved in everything the left back today. I feel like I've said his name more than anyone else has, and in fact, speaking of the devil, here he is on the ball again, giving it to Honda. Build up play is nice. Look at the triangles. Look at the build-up play. Look at the passing. Nemo skips past his man like he's not even there and lashes it into the back of his net. It's two goals finally for us in this game. And that was a really nice move capped off, I think, by Nemo, just leaving his defender in the dust. Nakamura, Kataoka, Sasaki, Nemo, this touch gets out his feet, leaves the defender for, well, dead, and then just finds the roof of the net. The keeper had no chance. I just noticed they've now switched to a 4-2-4 of their own, a very attacking system. There could be opportunities for more goals here as they leave themselves open. Nemo, 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 Mitsuhashi, Hirao, he's got another. The I have to play him at left back, don't I? I have to play him at left back. What is he doing? He's not meant to be this good. Just to recap, this is his attributes. Five finishing, he can run quick in terms of acceleration. He's got two goals in two games. What a player. Anyway, three minutes of added time at the end of this game. Shirley is just going to come and go. Two clean sheets today, two emphatic wins. And like I said, I feel like a big focus of this year now, really, is going to be on the Champions League as well as trying to defend it, our title. Whether or not that can be done... With great ease, I guess, remains to be seen. But with this start and the results we've got, albeit against some weaker teams, it looks like it's going to be on all the teams who were chasing us last year to have got better and push us harder this year. You can see here as well, by the way, loads of new contracts being signed. New contract for Nemo signed. It's a four-year deal, um, which is kind of nice to get. We're not going to be losing him anytime so soon. Mitsuhashi signed a new deal. Junpei Noda, homegrown at club, signed a new deal. Kamiyama as well has just extended his contract. His new deal will actually start at the start of next year, come January 2032. £3,000 for this guy? That's good with me. Anyway, folks, we got some silverware today. We had an away day and we opened up our league season. I hope you enjoyed the video. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, you know what? I'm going to wait and see what happens. Like I said earlier, there is a bit of a, a palmy that wants to get to Champions League action and rush through the season a little bit more. I guess how much we rush through the season is largely going to be dictated by what's happening in it. Hopefully, we're going to be battling towards the top and hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you have enjoyed today's video, go down below, leave a like. We're back on Wednesday for more Tokyo 23 action. Until then, take things easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.